Good day and welcome to another edition of True Footies Betting with Busher. How are you today, Busher? I'm feeling good, mate. Now, Busher, today you are True Footies resident master better. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience betting? Well, a few years ago, I was helping out a few mates. They had one of those Facebook pages where everyone chip pays for tips and that sort of thing. So I was doing a lot of their betting tips. Not so much footy, but I was helping with the footy tips and was pretty solid with it. Yes, he is True Footy's rain man. Okay. As in, I make it rain those fat stacks, mate. So, Busher, we just recorded our predictions podcast for the AFL 2020 season. So this video is not going to be predictions. We're actually going to be looking at what is some good value bets to put on for the 2020 season. Now, bear in mind... If you're under 18, we do not encourage you trying to bet. Well, you're not allowed to anyways, but uh, we're not encouraging that. that, kiddies. And also gamble responsibly if you are over the age of 18 as well. So, Busher, why don't And betting companies sponsor this, please. Yeah, yeah, we wish. We wish. It would be a good thing to sponsor, wouldn't yeah. it? Busher, did you have any sort of value bets for, like, let's say the simple ones, like the minor premiership of the flag? Well, I'll sort of preface everything by saying I've sort of split my bets into two categories. I've got solid bets, which are ones that, like, seem like a solid chance of happening, like that sort of thing. Whereas I've also got some speculative bets where I'm sort of like, for the money that the bookies are offering, I think there's a chance and it's worth speculating on having a crack at some of those speculative ones. There was one that did interest me. It was the Richmond West Coast Minor Premiership Quinella. Basically meaning Richmond West Coast finish top two, either order, it doesn't matter. As long as those two are the top two, you win. That was paying $11. Interesting. Was that the favourite? Though? Yeah, that was yeah. the favourite out of all those, but... For eleven dollars, I felt that was pretty solid. You're getting eleven to one. That's it, man. I have actually looked at value as well. I didn't really yeah. like any of the clear favourites, but I thought GWS at eight dollars fifty yeah. to finish top was a pretty good bet. And again, same with the flag. None of them were juicy enough for me to jump on, but I thought the Bulldogs at thirteen dollars yeah. probably represented the best value. Yeah, as I did mention on the prediction podcast, they were my dark horse. So yeah, thirteen bucks for a dark horse is pretty solid. Yeah, yeah it's not bad. Yeah. What is about the brown low? Have you got any good juicy bets? Well, well brown low, I've. I didn't look too deep at the brown Like I looked at the odds and stuff, and there's like nothing that seemed too ridiculous for me. But I saw on Bet Easy, Fifey top three in the brown line was paying two dollars fifty. Right. Unless barring something happening, that's almost money for jam. Yeah, injuries is the only thing that yeah. gets five. Oh, yeah, suspensions doesn't matter with yeah, both. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, I noticed it was interesting. I looked at sports bet. Crips and Fife are equal favourites, which is, uh. I think, a little rough on Fife. I thought he should be the favourite. Um, Bontempelli was the value one I like as well, because I actually think yeah. he's a good chance to win it. He's paying $13 as well. So if you go on a... Can you do a multi of Bulldogs winning the flag and Brownlow uh, think Bont? I think you can mo- do multis on some of those things. They're sometimes iffy when it comes to these futures multis, but I think that combination they might permit, yeah, depending nice. on the bookie as well as always. I've got yeah. some other good value ones, I reckon. Yeah. Canelio, $26. He didn't play a full season last year, and I think yeah. he pulled pretty well. Whether he plays forward more, I'm not too sure, but he's capable of a goal, so he's still capable of getting votes. I've gone McRae at $34. I thought that was pretty good value. But I, I like that from the perspective, if you're betting on Bont as well, chuck a few bucks on McRae as like yeah. a cover your ass sort of thing, because that is probably the one issue with like doing the Bont sort of bet, like mm. McRae and Dunkley. That's right. right. And GWS's Josh Kelly at $34, I thought was paying really good value considering yeah. he's one sort of with the Crips and Bont who emerged. He's the same age, I'm pretty sure, Kelly. He was the one that was pegged to go with yeah. them. And if he hits his straps and wins a brown low, I think $34 is worth a couple of bucks just as a little laugh. Have you had a look at Rising Star by any chance? I've gone a, in one of my speculative... I've gone speculative when looking at the Rising yeah. Star because like... Rouse like the favourite like three bucks isn't a bad price for a favourite but like mm. I've gone with Aiden Bonner for the Rising Star $21 $21 because yeah. the thing is he is their top 10 talent he's yeah. been in the system a few years so he's had that progression that guys like Rao haven't had the chance to have in the actual system now he's gone to a new team where he's going to be featured a lot more prominently, I feel. I think the only downside to Bonner is uh, he's physically developed, which is good, but the downside is I think they discriminate a little bit against mature, more mature players, like a third yeah. year player. But yeah, it's worth a bet. He's, he's yeah. capable of like performing well next year. Your boy, Caleb Sarong, was ranked sixth by sports bet, sixth most likely favourite for Rising Star. That surprised me a little bit. That surprised think. me too, actually. Yeah, he, he was well ahead of Hayden Young, so he's paying $13. Yeah. Do you think Isaac Rankin is too generous at $7? Rankin's like, I think Rankin's as good a shot as anyone really other than Rao so I think he's going to play as a small forward though in a struggling team I yeah. just can't see him winning the Rising Star personally I don't think he's going to get enough goals or possessions to be honest yeah that's the key how they play Rankin like because he's a guy talented enough you could play him in a number of ways if you play him in a few of those ways 
gives him the chance to excel and rack up a nod. And, I've yeah. gone some other value ones. Dylan Stevens, as I posted in, yeah. as I said in the video, rather, my uh, Smokey is paying fifteen dollars. Cody Waitman is a gun uh, for the Bulldogs, paying twenty six dollars as a small forward. He might not win it, but I think he's actually. I think it's really good value though, twenty six dollars. Yeah. I think he'll finish fairly high. Uh, Will Gould is a nice Smokey, yeah. forty one dollars. Probably plays pretty early at Sydney's. Back line, he's built like a man, like Shannon Hearn already. What is he, over 100 kilos? Yeah. And then Riley Collier-Dawkins, the big-bodied mid from Richmond, paying $51, and that is an absolute smoky But I was just um, saying, pretty good with Richmond, the quality on Richmond, how how likely is he to get a game? Maybe. It may yeah. be, yeah. He, yeah. They, they'll need him, them, he'll need them to gift him games, but yeah. it could happen if they rate him. Yeah, he's got the talent. He's yeah. a talented kid, I will say that. Yeah. This one is probably my most speculative out of all those speculatives I mentioned. I've gone with Charlie Dixon for the mm. common it was paying $41 but I really feel like he's that undisputed number one key forward at Port it's the first time he's been healthy and I gotta admit I'm probably basing it a bit off seeing him in a Marsh game where he was just plucking balls below his knees he was just agile wow, during the game yeah. oh work around the ball he just looked so lean and good to go and on talent he's Gross. there with Dick, like Lynch and those guys for the paying one tenth of what he's yeah. paid. I've gone because I was looking at like a few guys have over unders for goals for the year, and there was a couple where I've gone the under. I've gone Eddie Betts kicking under 34 and a half goals, so basically 34 goals or less, mm. and that was paying a dollar 98 on Bet Easy as well. But like, I don't think Eddie Betts is Carlton will put him in a position to kick 35. 35 goals. It would be a strong effort. Yeah, and the other one I've gone is Josh Jenkins under 40.5 goals. Yeah, right. Like, even though yeah. he's probably going to be the second toll in Geelong with Hawkins, like Hawkins will be still getting the lion's share of attention. He'll be still kicking the brunt of the goals. Brian Myers will be chipping in with a few. They've got other... Patrick Dangerfield will be going forward and giving them goals. What's that paying? That was paying $1.88, Josh yep. Jenkins. Yeah, that's a solid one rather than speculative for sure. Yeah. For my comment, I thought it was interesting. This isn't... a th- Predicted bet, but Kennedy top four was interesting for me. He's okay. actually the fourth favourite with nine dollars for the common. Okay. I thought that was interesting. But Buddy Franklin ten dollars. I would. I'm going to go safe with this one. I'll probably bet on Ben Brown at six dollars, and uh, a lot depends on how well North go this year. I, think. I was thinking Ben Brown, but I did pick him in last year's video, and he let me down. Ah, uh, yeah, right, yeah. I've got another stanky one for you, yeah. Buddy Franklin, to reach a thousand goals this year, which I worked out he needs eighty three goals this season. That, that would probably rely on Sydney making finals. Yes is paying $2.20. No is paying $1.60. I think $1.60 for him not to hit 83 goals. Yeah, the dollar six, that's 60% that's return safe. for something that's realistically not going to happen. Yeah, 60% goals return. Is, yeah. 83 goals is huge. would be a huge yeah. year. And I don't. I think he's capable, but like I think that's a massive ask. You don't well. see guys near that tally these days. Like You see him around the 65 mark. That's 20 extra goals you got to account for for what's been the expected norm yeah. for a column in the past few years. I think if Sydney was challenging for top four, I'd be more comfortable with his bet but yeah. um yeah no but 60 percent return for no is very nice that's yeah well spotted i like that thank you i've so, got a couple of all australian bets actually sure i've is. got my solid one bont to make the all australian team was paying a dollar 90 yep so i think like he's like the captain of the bulldogs like yeah. if any of those guys are going to make an all australian team he'd be the one to get a nod because it's not three votes per game sort of thing it's more yes. accumulative yep so he gets the love in like those accumulative assessments like he won the coaches award wasn't it last season yeah yeah I like that yeah. that's a good call so all Australian I feel good and my I've got a more speculative all Australian I've gone with Clayton Oliver to make the all Australian team at four dollars yep I, like I feel that. if Melbourne have that resurgence and come back up the ladder he'd be a key component of it and a serious contender to make the all Australian team yep. oh, actually I've got another all Australian one I've got Dylan Grimes to be an all Australian defender like that because those first two I mentioned were just general all Australian market this one the Defender specific market on Bet Easy, I believe. Yeah. He was paying $2.75 to make the team as an All Australian defender. That's pretty good. He made it last year. Rance is gone, so he's only going to have to yep. expand his role. Yeah. Richmond is still there. I like that. Yeah. I think McGovern's got a bit of an injury cloud yep. at the moment, so that's a good call. Yeah. There was one for most disposals this season. I've gone with Lockie Neal at $13. Ooh, that's Because he's always a perennial like man in the disposal. Titch was the favourite, but. Titch, yeah. it's a bit hard to tell with Titch at this Probably stage. Probably not enough yeah. value there. Whereas exactly. Like Neil, what is yeah. it, $13? Yeah, that'd be really good. Yeah, that was definitely speculative value yeah. for sure. Well, I've gone one where I'm selling my own team down the river here. It's speculative for sure because Gold Coast was the heavy favourite for this, obviously, but it was the least wins for a non Victorian team. Fremantle was paying $5. I don't know I've got a little more faith in Gold Coast from the medium for God knows what reason. And yeah, I'm a bit okay. more pessimistic about my own boys, so <laughs> take 
with that what you will. It's definitely speculative. I think I'm comfortable not betting on that, to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I'll just take you through my last few stanky little ones. Um, Carlton to win more than eight and a half games this year, yes or no? It was Ooh. yes as a dollar eighty, no two dollars. I think no at two dollars is actually not the worst bet. Mm. I think they could have eight wins this season and it actually would be an yeah. alright result for them. Yeah, eight's like that's the number that Freo was hitting the past few years when they were sort of like yeah. Yeah, starting to get in that pushing position where Carlton's at now. Gross. Hawthorne over 11.5 wins is a dollar eighty-seven each way. I actually wouldn't mind saying yes, they will get 12 wins and play finals. I'm pretty yeah. comfortable at a dollar eighty-seven. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, value. that's worth flipping the coin on. And finally, uh, there's. There's another little stanky little bet here. Fremantle leading goal yeah. kicker, right? Walters is the favourite at $1.70. Yeah. Now, if everyone's fit and firing, yes, that's a good bet. But Tabernar, if he plays a full season at $7.50, I think that's actually pretty good value, especially if Walters plays more mid, yeah. which he might. If Tabernar's healthy all season, that's shit hot. He's actually not a bad like mm. goal kicker, right? So I think, yeah, if he plays a full yeah. game, a full season, he could kick 40-plus goals, and Walters could yeah. end up with 35 or something like that. I actually think yeah. at $7.50, that is definitely worth considering. Yeah, I, I like that. I really do. Actually. All right, guys, that is all the juicy tips we have for AFL 2020. Let us know in the comments if you have any value bets you want us to know about. As I did say at the start of the video, though, make sure you are over 18 if you're actually going to bet. And if you do bet, gamble responsibly. If you haven't already checked it out, check out True Footy Podcast 47, where I interview Young King Cookson, who's a gun YouTuber in the AFL scene. And then also True Footy Podcast 48, which is coming shortly on our AFL 2020 predictions, not our bets for value. I do remember Cookson shouting me out for the betting with Busher video last year at some True. stage. True, yes. This is Cookson approved, this video. Yeah, so Absolutely. Cool. All right, thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.